and uh, first thing that uh, I want to discuss is uh, mixed effects models. And um, actually mixed effects models uh, is just a term uh, that is used to, to describe a class of uh, regression models that uh, contains not only uh, the usual uh, the usual parts uh, when you have some variable and you multiply this variable by some coefficient, uh, but also it includes uh, so-called random effects. Uh, and to discuss uh, what uh, these random effects are and uh, why we need it, uh, let us uh, consider uh, the regression model, uh, a very simple one, and uh, that is actually equivalent to t-test. Um, let me consider an example. Uh, assume that uh, I'm interested in some differences between uh, two groups of people. Let us assume that uh, for example, I have uh, some, I don't know, information about phonetics. Uh, for example, I have uh, informants, uh, I have people, and I ask them to, uh, to say some word, and I'm interested in the length of a particular, uh, of a particular sounds in this word, or the length uh, of the word itself. Uh, so I have uh, I have data that looks like uh, the following. I have informant and uh, assume that I have two types of informant. Uh, some of them are native speakers of some language and some other are not native speaker. Uh, so uh, there is variable native speaker. And uh, then uh, I'm asking about word duration. And uh, assume that uh, all the speakers uh, are asked to pronounce the same word or probably the same sound. Okay, let us uh, let us use here some. Uh, I don't know how to say it. Uh, okay, let us assume that uh, this is some syllable. Syllable duration. And uh, we have informant uh, with some identifier. This informant is native speaker and. Uh, their uh, syllable duration is uh, 25 and we have another informant and uh, he's also native speaker and their syllable duration is 35. And we have uh, another speaker. He's not native, uh, no, no, not native speaker and uh, their syllable duration is 45 and so on. So I have a table like this. I wonder, uh, are there anybody else uh, going to connect us? Probably I have to announce additionally. Just a second. just to make sure that everybody are aware of today's lecture. 
Okay. Uh, so now uh, assume that uh, I want to uh, test something like: uh, Is it true that uh, syllable duration uh, for native speakers uh, is uh, less than syllable duration for non-native speaker? Uh, so I want to have a question. Uh, is it true that uh, syllable duration uh, for native speakers is different from syllable duration of non-native speakers. So, uh, how would you solve this problem? How would you answer this question with, with which tools? Any ideas? Linear regression? Um, yes, we can use linear regression, but actually we can use a, even simpler tools. Uh, actually, they are more or less equivalent in this case, but if we return to the beginning of the course and we have two groups of people and we have two groups of numbers and you have to compare their averages. T-test, yes. Uh, T-test, yeah. Uh, we, can, uh, we can use T-test. Uh, can use t test uh, and just compare two samples. Uh, yes, uh, and this is actually how uh, would you probably solve this problem? And uh, you have yeah, actually uh, there was uh, another idea to to use linear regression. How would you use linear regression in this case? Just take uh, syllable duration as dependent variable mm -hmm. and nativeness as independent as predictor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, we have syllable duration uh, as uh, dependent variable. We say that it depends on uh, on uh, this variable native speaker, and uh, I uh, will encode this native speaker as dummy variable as usual. So I have dummy uh, that is native speaker. native speaker equals to yes. So I just uh, uh, so I just encode uh, yes and no as one and zero. And uh, here I have some coefficient b to one. And uh, so I have this uh, I have this regression. And let us uh, recall shortly uh, what is uh, how to interpret this b to not and b to one. What is beta naught and beta one? It's 
So according to model, uh, beta naught uh, is syllable duration for which speakers? For not natives, uh, yes, for not native speakers, because uh, in this case, uh, in this case, this variable is zero. Uh, so this is uh, syllable duration for not native speakers. And what is beta one? How would you interpret beta one in this case? As nativeness, uh, a syllable duration with native speakers. Mm, not exactly. Uh, let us uh, look. If uh, I have a native speaker, then this variable is uh, one, right? And uh, then uh, this formula gives me, so if this is one, then uh, this formula gives me that in this case, syllable duration is uh, what? If this thing is one. Why do we have B zero? um syllable duration for native speakers uh no, i say for not native speakers ah not okay mm -hmm. so for native speakers uh syllable duration equals to what mm. Syllable duration of non natives. Mm, okay, beta naught. Yeah, plus some um, efficient. Yeah, plus beta one. Right? Yeah. Just because uh, in this case, uh, in this case, this variable goes to one. And so we have uh, just beta naught plus beta one times one, which is just beta naught plus beta one. Right. Uh, so, in this case, uh, how can we interpret uh, beta one? Uh, so, uh, actually, as you said, uh, syllable duration uh, in this case for native speakers is equal to uh, syllable duration for non-native speakers. Uh, non-native speakers. Uh, plus beta one. So what is beta one? How can we interpret beta one? Difference between mm -hmm. those. Yeah, difference between native speakers and not native speakers. difference of uh, of this uh, syllable duration uh, so uh, in fact we see that this linear regression is uh, more or less equivalent to this t-test i mean that we solve the same problem if we are interested in this coefficient uh, then if we see that this coefficient is non-zero if it is significant uh, then it means that uh, there is significant difference between uh, native speakers and not native speakers. So, uh, so, uh, we test 
null hypothesis uh, that uh, beta one is zero. So no difference. And uh, if we reject it, Uh, we say uh, that beta one is significant. <laughs> and uh, so groups are different. So this is actually the same, uh, the same problem and uh, it, it works uh, more or less like a t-test. There are some differences. If you use t-test from R, uh, it will use some a bit, a little bit different calculations, but uh, basically from uh, just uh, the point of view of the question, uh, we see that uh, this is uh, the same thing to, uh, to, to fit, uh, to fit uh, this, this kind of regression with uh, only one variable uh, that is this variable uh, is the same thing uh, as to to apply t-test to our uh, our values just we can we are trying to understand is it true that uh, there is uh, some uh, significant difference between two groups and mm, now uh, um, well uh, basically uh, a lot of a lot of statistical tests uh, tests can be restated in terms of uh, regressions uh, in this uh, simple case actually uh, uh, there is no much advantage in the usage of uh, regression uh, if, if compared with t-test but uh, sometimes uh, when we have uh, more complex uh, data uh, then uh, it is better to use re regression that takes into account several variables. Even if you want to do something uh, as simple as to, um, as to understand are there any differences between two groups. Uh, because uh, it is possible that you have some interconnection, some relation between variables. And actually uh, if, um, uh, we consider a little bit different uh, example, then uh, we can see why uh, this may be important and why this may be useful to think about these uh, comparison problems uh, when you just two groups and you want to compare them uh, in terms of regression models. So uh, are there any question, uh, any questions so far for this part, for this part of the story? So uh, in this part, I just show that uh, for this kind of data to fit uh, linear regression with one uh, with one independent variable, and uh, this is our dependent variable, is the same thing, uh, at least uh, if we think about the question that we are trying to answer, this is the same thing as uh, to, to, to do t-test, to do two sample t-test, to compare two samples, the average values of two samples. Okay, any questions so far? Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, then uh, let me consider a bit different, uh, a bit different experiment. Actually, it is more or less the same, but uh, at uh, the previous experiment, uh, you see that we have uh, one row uh, corresponds to one informant and uh, we have uh, for in different roles we have different informants and now let us consider a bit different structure assume that uh, i uh, have uh, several words and uh, i ask uh, the same informant uh, to pronounce uh, each of this word 
and in each word uh, there is uh, some uh, syllable that I'm interested in. So uh, it means that uh, I have another structure. Um, maybe, uh, uh, maybe I even just uh, ask an informant to pronounce some uh, text, uh, some free text. Uh, for example, this is not, uh, and it can be some kind of interview when just I want I uh, ask informant to uh, to uh, just uh, discuss some topics and then I extract uh, this syllable duration of the syllable that I'm interested in. And now I have a bit different, uh, a bit different table. Uh, I have in format, thank you. And uh, now again for this informant I have information about nativeness, native speaker. And I have uh, again I have syllable duration. Uh, but now uh, it is possible that uh, for the same informant, uh, for example, Uh, probably I have uh, I have table that looks like this. So uh, in this new table, for each informant, uh, I have several rows, and uh, so I have several values of syllable duration. Uh, for example, these are just different words, and in each word I, I calculate the syllable duration. And each informant is asked to pronounce several words. Um, uh, now again, uh, I have these syllable durations, uh, and again I can, uh, and again I'm interested in the same question. I have the same question. Uh, is it true? Uh, okay, um, let me state it in the following way. Are there any difference uh, in syllable duration between native speakers and not native speakers? And uh, I can actually try to use uh, the same uh, the same technique as previously. Uh, let us assume that uh, I do the same thing uh, as previously. Um, okay, let us start with just a simple t-test. I just collect all these numbers uh, that uh, corresponds to native speakers, and uh, I collect uh, all these numbers that corresponds to not native speakers. And I just uh, push everything into t-test, and I will get some result. It will compare these two samples and give me information about the difference between them. So, uh, what happens? Uh, if we use t-test. Uh, 
uh, let us uh, to, uh, to demonstrate uh, the effect that uh, I want to uh, that uh, I want to stress. Uh, let us assume that I have only two informants. Um, So uh, one is native speaker. And uh, another one is not native speaker. And uh, then I collect a lot of data from each informant. So uh, I have a lot of rows that correspond to a first informant. And uh, there are some durations uh, that are associated with this informant. And there are a lot of rows uh, that uh, are, uh, that, that came from the second informant. And also these numeric values uh, from, from this second uh, informant. And uh, is it possible that t-test, after I feed these two samples into the t-test, is it possible that it will report that, yes, there is a difference? Uh, is it possible for this kind of data? Of course, it is not the full table. Uh, I have a lot, a, lot of, uh, a lot more rows that just are not shown. Uh, is it possible that t-test uh, says us that there is a difference between these two, uh, these two samples. In yes. fact, yes. Mm -hmm. Why not? Uh, but how can we interpret it? Um, what if t-test rejects null hypothesis? and uh, says there is significant difference. Uh, can we conclude uh, that uh, we actually have a significant difference between uh, native speakers and not native speakers. Uh, have significant difference. Uh, so, can we can we make this uh, this conclusion that the difference that we uh, have in this data uh, that uh, okay we have we have statistically significant result no problem with with uh, with this uh, but can we conclude from this statistically significant result that uh, we actually have significant difference between native speakers and not native speakers? from the data like this, provided that we have only one speaker of each type. One native speaker and one not native speaker. How do you think? Actually, this question is not very statistical, it is not very mathematical, it is just a kind of common sense question. Uh, you have only two, you have only two uh, informants, uh, and you collected a lot of data from these informants. For example, you asked uh, both informants to read aloud uh, the full, uh, the full book, uh, like the full Lord of the Ring, 
or the full uh, war, uh, war and peace and uh, collected a lot of data from uh, from each of informants and you see that there is a statistically significant difference but uh, can you conclude that uh, there is a statistically significant difference between native speakers and not native speakers maybe it's a bad answer but i think probably yes because um our sample can never uh, like fully cover the whole population. So the only thing we're interested in is, is one uh, enough, not so, not so bad as 10, for example. Mm -hmm. But- uh, Because 10 is also not the whole uh, population. But yes, uh, 10 is, not, is also not the whole population. This is correct. Uh, so are there any other opinions? Uh, so do we have enough data to conclude that there is significant difference between native speakers and not native speakers if we have only two informants in our study? One informant native speaker and another informant is not native speaker. Try to think about alternative hypotheses that can arise, that can explain your data in this case. Mm -hmm. Okay, probably I can, uh, uh, okay, probably we can consider a different experiment. Uh, for example, let us, uh, uh, let us uh, okay. Uh, let us assume that we are comparing. Uh, we are comparing uh, who is better in I don't know in in reading uh, people from Russia or people from um, from outside of Russia. And I will ask uh, to read. Uh, a lot of sentences, for example, uh, I will ask Natalia and Sebastiana to read uh, some sentences in English. And uh, I will record uh, the duration of each sentence. And uh, then um, after that, I will apply to these uh, durations of sentences. There are a lot of sentences uh, produced by Natalia and a lot of sentences produced by Sebastiana. And I will uh, again uh, use uh, t-test to compare the length of this, um, the durations of these sentences. And after that, uh, assume that uh, it says that duration of Sebastiano's sentences are on average uh, larger than durations of Natalia's sentences. Is it true that uh, I can conclude from this experiment uh, that people in Russia um, yeah, produce uh, smaller durations than people outside of Russia. Do we have enough data? How do you think? Maybe no, not enough. Uh, not enough. Actually, the comparison that we do, um, what exactly uh, does it compare? Does it compare average, um, for example, average, okay, let us return to our original experiment. Uh, does it compare syllable duration between native speakers and not native speakers? Or does it compare syllable duration of what and what, who and who? Actually, I want to say that if we have only one informant uh, in each group, then um, then what we actually compare is uh, the difference between these two particular informants. So if I would compare sentence duration uh, that are produced by Natalia and Sebastiano, I will compare I will compare Natalia and Sebastiano, and I cannot generalize uh, I cannot generalize these results. And to some large groups. 
uh, to whom Natalia and Sebastian uh, belong. I cannot generalize it, for example, to uh, Russian native speakers and not Russian native speakers. I cannot generalize it. I cannot generalize it at all, actually. Uh, but uh, we see that t-test doesn't understand it. It says, yes, there is a significant difference. So um, uh, this actually shows that if we just have some groups of numbers and we just feed these numbers to t-test, uh, when we try to interpret the result of this t-test, we have to take into account how these numbers are obtained, what is our population, and what we actually compare. And uh, then uh, we see that we have to take into account uh, this, uh, for example, in this experiment, if I want to give your answer to this kind of question, I have to take into account the fact uh, that uh, some of these numbers are produced by the same informant. Because if I would consider these numbers as completely independent and uh, apply t-test to these numbers, I will get a result that, uh, that cannot be interpreted as the answer to this question. Because in this question, we are interested uh, in the difference uh, between native speakers and not native speakers. So our our populations are population of all native speakers and all not native speakers. But what we actually compare are, are just two informants and data that uh, is collected from these two informants. And in fact, this is extreme case. But it is possible that uh, you have a, a table like this and you have not two informants, but for example, 10 informants in each group. Uh, but again, due to the fact that uh, these values are not independent, so values that are produced by each informant are not independent, uh, this uh, makes uh, application of t-test to just to these numbers uh, not, uh, not actually correct procedure. If we are interested in these kind of questions. And uh, to, to overcome this issue, we can make different, we can do uh, it in different ways. Uh, so uh, the answer here is no, uh, because we compared uh, just two informants. and discover it uh, that there is a significant difference between these informants. Uh, but uh, it can be explained uh, not uh, not by uh, the fact of different uh, language background. I mean variable. I mean variable native speaker. Uh, but some other personal factors. Uh, for example, some people Uh, speak faster than another. Uh, 
So we understand that uh, that uh, different people uh, have different different properties. And if we have only two informants in our study, we cannot decide, uh, is it true that in fact, this variable that we are interested in is uh, the reason uh, to the difference be between these uh, between these values that uh, we are studying, or uh, we just, or it is possible that this difference that we see here is just because people are different, and for example, some people just just say um, say uh, j j just have uh, faster speech, and uh, other people have. Um, slower speech, even in the same group, uh, we have we have some uh, some factors that are related to informants, and in this study, if we have only two informants, we cannot decide which factor played a role in the difference that we obtained here. So uh, we have to take into account. Uh, this uh, informant specific uh, informant specific effects. So people are different. And uh, this can be done in, in a different way. And uh, first way is rather simple. And um, we can uh, just, if we have this table, uh, we can transform this table uh, to a table uh, when we have one informant per row. So each row corresponds to just one informant. Uh, we can do it, uh, for example, simply by averaging of these numbers. So instead of collecting a lot of numbers from each informant and analyzing this number, we collect them, but then we average them. So after that, uh, we can aggregate uh, data for each informant. And obtain a new table. And in this new table, we have, uh, again, we have informant. Uh, we have uh, native speaker. And we have average duration of syllable. And in this case, um, we have something like this. And so on. And uh, then we can apply t-test to these numbers and uh, subdivide it by these two groups and uh, then everything will be fine. Uh, let us look what happens if we use this method to the data that we discussed before. What if we use this method uh, to the data, if we apply this method to uh, this data when we have only two informants. What is the resulting table? What happens if we uh, what happens if we summarize, if we aggregate uh, this table in such a way if we have only two informants and uh, I want to produce the table, this this new table. What happens in this case? Uh, 
uh, yeah, in fact, we have only after after this aggregation, we will have only um, the, the the table with only two rows. So if we try to use t test, we have to put uh, we have to put only two numbers in this t test, and of course, in this case, it is obvious that it is not enough information to make a decision uh, about the statistically significant difference between uh, these two corresponding groups, just because we have only one value in each group. Uh, so uh, this is uh, one possible approach, and this approach is actually used. Uh, but uh, sometimes uh, it is better to use different approach. Uh, particularly approach with a uh, mixed effects model. Uh, what does it mean? Uh, in these mixed effects models, uh, we have the following uh, we have the following model. Uh, we assume that uh, syllable duration, Uh, uh, is given by a formula that is similar to the previous one. But also uh, we add a new term, uh, some uh, value u uh, that depends on the speaker ID And we assume that this term is uh, that this is some number that is related to a particular speaker. And uh, actually, we have different values of this number for different speakers. And we assume that uh, this uh, number uh, is, does not depend on other variables that we have here, only on the speaker. Uh, and uh, actually, uh, we we say that this is random effect. And in this example, uh, this uh, this value just shows um, that, for example, that different people uh, have different uh, different speed of their speech. So some people uh, have faster speech and some people have lower speech. And so this syllable duration uh, depends on this uh, speaker ID in some way. And we assume that uh, we just have, actually in this model, we assume uh, the following, that uh, there is some base level of, um, syllable duration. And also there is some difference between different speakers. And also there is uh, this term that shows uh, that native speakers uh, can produce faster or, or slower speech compared to non-native speakers. And uh, this, is, uh, this is how we uh, this is uh, uh, how we do this uh, mixed effects models. Uh, actually, uh, uh, it is called mixed effects because there are two kinds of terms in this model. Uh, this term uh, is called random effect. And uh, these, uh, these terms are called fixed effects. Actually, uh, uh, this is intercept, but fixed effect is that one. And uh, so uh, just be because we have two kinds of effects, fixed effects and random effects, uh, then this is called mixed effects model. So uh, we, we have an assumption. Uh, this term U of speaker ID 
uh, is random. It depends on the speaker. Uh, but it does not depend uh, on uh, other variables. In here on native speaker. Okay, we probably uh, we probably denote it is uh, uh, as informant ID. So let me uh, just use to avoid confusion. Let us uh, note yeah, that uh, we denote this variable as informant. So uh, what does it mean when uh, I say that? Uh, this variable does not depend uh, on other variables. It just means that I do not uh, assume uh, that. Uh, okay, uh, if if I have uh, if I have uh, some people who are native speakers and some people who are not native speakers, uh, the distribution of uh, the value of this variable uh, should be more or less the same. It is uh, unlikely to see that. For example, all people uh, who are native speakers uh, have larger value of this variable uh, compared to people who are not native speakers. We assume that uh, this is not the case. So we assume that this is some property of a speaker uh, that does not depend on uh, other variables. So uh, basically we assume that our model works uh, like the following. When uh, some informant born, when some person born, uh, it is uh, assigned this, uh, this value uh, to this person. So even before uh, they start uh, learning any language, for example, um, then uh, this variable is uh, this variable is assigned to this person. And uh, then uh, this person uh, uh, learns some language and either becomes native speaker of the language that we are interested in or does not become native speaker, learn some other language. For example, we are interested in English. So our informants can, uh, um, can born in English speaking uh, family or not English speaking family. And then this variable is determined. But this variable, the value of this variable, does not depend on the value of this variable. Uh, sorry, uh, this variable does not, uh, does not. So th these two variables are independent. Uh, I can say it in this way. Uh, and uh, if we can make this assumption, we can add uh, this term here and Uh, then we can apply this model. So uh, if uh, we have only two informants in our data, then any difference, uh, any difference in their syllable duration can be explained just by this term. And we don't need this term at all. Because if you have only two, only two informants, then okay, we, we, our model says that their syllable duration can be different due to this term. And uh, then uh, we will get non-significant result for this variable, more or less automatically. But uh, if we have uh, a lot of people, not, uh, I don't know how, how much is a lot, but if we have enough people of both groups, uh, of native speakers and not native speakers, and if we have uh, if we have some systematic differences between them, uh, then we cannot explain it just by this variable, because we expect that this variable 
uh, is assigned randomly uh, to different people. And this variable, uh, this assignment does not, uh, does not depend on uh, the other variables. So it is, it is impossible, for example, that, so basically uh, our model is the following. Uh, can be illustrated like this. Uh, the distribution of U uh, of speaker uh, of informant. Uh, is something like this. So we have something like normal distribution probably and uh, it does not depend on on the group. So I would have something like this. This is the distribution in uh, in one group and this is the distribution in uh, another group. So for example, this is for example, this is native speakers. And this is not native speakers. So uh, we believe that each informant get uh, their own value of u uh, just at the beginning. It, it, and the distribution from which this variable, uh, this value u is obtained does not depend on, uh, on the group. Uh, and uh, it is impossible uh, to have uh, this picture. So uh, we cannot explain this variable u cannot be used to explain the difference between native speakers and not native speakers. So we assume that this picture is impossible. It is not true that they obtained this value of u from a uh, different distribution depending on their, uh, the value of this uh, native speaker variable. This distribution should be the same. And every systematic difference between native speakers and not native speakers uh, will be recorded in this term. It will came from this term. This term shows how native speakers are shifted with respect to not native speakers. So uh, even if this, uh, this variable is not shifted, the, uh, this variable can be shifted. There is, it is possible that there is some difference between uh, syllable duration in native speakers and not native speakers, uh, just due to this term, not this. And this term accounts for some personal variations between, uh, between different people. So this is, uh, this is uh, how these uh, mixed effects models are constructed. And uh, you can use library LME4, and you can use construct uh, this model, construct and feed them. Uh, these mixed effects models. Actually, uh, this is a rather simple package. Uh, not, not very simple, in fact, if you use uh, all its abilities, but if you just use simple models like we discussed here, uh, then it is not very uh, complicated to use uh, this package. So other uh, questions so far? It is a rather new concept about random effects. Uh, so 
I'm not sure that uh, this is simple to understand, but uh, let us try to ask some questions. I think I have a question. Yes. And it's um, more or less like connected to what they said before, like that we can kind of ignore this maybe because um, when we um, find some data in the corpus, for example, mm -hmm. in Russian national corpus, there are a lot mm -hmm. of texts mm -hmm. written all by different people. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm, I decided to take one example from each text, for, for mm -hmm. example, mm -hmm. and I have 100, uh, I don't know, 1,000, uh, more than 1,000 examples in each um, cell and uh, observations. Mm -hmm. uh, but nobody ever cares about the fact that they are all produced by different people <laughs> who have a lot of different... No, if, if they're produced by different people, it is okay. But if you have several, if you have a structure like if you have a structure like this, when uh, the same in, in the same informant produced uh, produced different uh, values, uh, then it can be a problem. Mm. So actually, uh, um, in some uh, in some cases, we want to take it into account. Actually. Uh, for example, if people try to understand, is it true that, for example, you have two corpus of texts and in one corpus, for, for example, you have some, you have corpus for uh, just um, ordinary Russian and another corpus for some kind of dialectical uh, version of Russian and you want to compare some features between these two corpus. And then you probably have to take into account uh, the fact that you have several observations in each corpus that are uh, correspond to to the same informant. In fact, uh, in fact, people do it, and um, uh, they use uh, they use either of these two techniques, or uh, this one, uh, when you just aggregate information for. A, for each, for example, you can aggregate information per each informant, per each speaker, or you can use these mixed effects models. Actually, you can try to use some other models, um, but uh, I think these two, um, uh, these two are most popular. Of course, sometimes people just don't care, um, but Okay, <laughs> uh, it is possible uh, as well. I'm not sure that it is correct. But uh, now I have another question. Mm -hmm. uh, is it the case that we um, don't treat it as a random effect if we only have um, <clears throat> one observation from each speaker, for example? If we have one observation for each speaker, then uh, it's fine. We then uh, we don't have to add to this, uh, this variable because actually we assume in all our models, we actually assume that each, uh, that each observation have some noise factor that is related to this observation. This is why we apply uh, this statistical stuff because we want to understand that our conclusions uh, are not, um, and not determined by this uh, by this noise in our data. So uh, we assume that uh, actually that these numbers uh, they are somewhat somewhat random. There's some randomness in them because it, they are depend on the speaker. Or they depend on the speaker condition and so on. Uh, so uh, this is okay. So uh, you have to include uh, these kind of variables um, if you have some. If you have uh, some hierarchical data like this, so we have a kind of hierarchy here. We have several observations here that are, that came from the same from the same object from the same object here from the same informant. And if you have this hierarchical uh, experiment design, your hierarchical data, then you probably have to take into account the structure of your 
of your data, the, the structure of the data generator generation process. This can be done by using this thing. Okay, I still have a question. Yes, yes. Uh, every time a new question appears. Uh, in case of noise, maybe yes, I understand why we don't need this. But if I really think that <clears throat> individual um, items can give some effect, for example, if I study the behavior of verbs, mm -hmm. and ver the verbs that I include in my sample, they do not form any closed class. So Mm -hmm. um, they are not fixed, probably. Mm -hmm. Can I treat them uh, like random effect if every observation comes only from one verb? But I want to account if verbs behave differently, if they are still a factor. Uh, so I'm not sure that I understand your, uh, your uh, research design. You have, you have verbs. And um, and uh, what happens next? You have different verbs, uh, and in what other variables are associated with these verbs? So I have mm -hmm. verb. Mm -hmm. No, okay. No, primer, oh. mm -hmm. well, for example, I, I know I study um, the case marking somewhere, and uh, it can be dependent on different uh, factors like mm -hmm. um, I know class of the noun for example or animacy of the noun mm -hmm. uh, and also I suppose that it can depend uh, on the verb that comes with this noun mm -hmm. to put it simply so I take um, observation for different pairs with verbs and nouns um, and uh, I have like take cat or mm -hmm. kill a cat or mm -hmm. uh, play with a cat. Uh, the, so the, um, my dependent variable is case marking. And I look at all these variables like class, animacy, and verb. But uh, um, if animacy and class are fixed, as I understand it, Verbs are not because um, I can't account for all the verbs. I just chose a random number, a random set. And they are, all have their own properties, quite different. Uh, so um, do, you have, uh, do you have the same verbs in your table? Uh, so, uh, so, um, is, okay. it true, is it true that each verb uh, that you have e one row or one verb? Is it true yes. that uh, then then this factor of verb is already is already included into this? So you you just say that uh, this verb produces this noise that we take into account in all our models automatically. Uh, mm -hmm. What is interesting uh, when when we have to when we have to uh, we have to include this um, term is uh, when we understand that we have, uh, for example, like like this, if we have different informants, uh, then we understand that we have some noise that is specific to informant, and this uh, this noise affects uh, these different uh, different values in the same way. So, for example, if this informant uh, uh, speak faster, then all these numbers will be will be small relative, relatively to some other person who uh, speak uh, slower. And uh, this is uh, this is what is important. This is this is why we we have to to, to add these random effects. If uh, if you if here you assume that. Uh, the choice of uh, verb um, affects some some variable like this one. Uh, yes, this is possible. But if you don't have this grouping, if you don't have the fact that the same verb uh, yeah, that the same verb uh, appear in different rows in this table, then uh, you already took into account uh, the fact that um, there is some randomness in your data. There is no uh, this effect that the same uh, the same noisy factor the same 
uh, the same randomness affects different uh, different observations just because here you have this grouping and if you have different verbs uh, different verbs here uh, all these verbs are different then you don't have this grouping you just have each observation have some noise that is related to this observation and we are not actually interested where this noise uh, came from we just interested we, we just say that there is some noise and okay it, it, probably this noise came from these verbs but this is fine no problem and if it's not noise if i want to measure how different verbs affect the choice maybe they um fall then in the uh, then then you probably have to do another experiment if you want if you are interested in the connection if you're interested in how this variable affects this variable yeah then uh, you have to then uh, you have to okay in um, um, uh, in fact in this case you need uh, several several values uh, in this case you need uh, a table when the same verb appear several times in this uh, in this column and in this case you can add it for example as random effect and in this case for example you can uh, see how what is um, what is the so in this case you can uh, think about variance of this variable so it if this variance is large it means that uh, it means that uh, this this uh, factor um, gives a large contribution to this uh, dependent variable and if this uh, variance is smaller then it means that uh, there are no difference uh, there are no difference uh, that the difference that uh, exists uh, can be explained not by this variable but some other variables so yes in this case you can do it but if you have only one verb uh, per row uh, then you cannot uh, then you cannot extract any information about the dependence between this verb and uh, for example this variable just because you don't have enough data because any uh, dependence that we can possibly uh, extract uh, they are can also be explained by some other random factors that we assume are applied to each row of your data mm -hmm. so probably you have uh, probably you can have something like you have a lot of words words take you have a lot of verbs take and you see that uh, the value of that you have something like this and uh, at the same case you have uh, a lot of uh, a lot of uh, words play and you see that you have more for example value b here and in this case you can probably say okay uh, i see that uh, the choice of word here and the choice of uh, case marker here are, are dependent to each either, uh, with each other so probably probably there is some causal relationship between them or some other kind of correlation between them but in this case we need uh, we need several observations per each verb otherwise we just don't have enough data we just cannot extract the information from the noise okay thank you yeah mm -hmm. i understand mm -hmm. good so more questions okay uh then it seems that uh that's always the lecture because we are uh, <clears throat> uh we are out of the time uh and uh at uh, the practical lesson uh, you will have practice uh, with this with this stuff and so that's all for today actually uh, I uh, wasn't able to discuss several uh, methods that are usually discussed at this course, like um, decision trees and some other uh, methods. So.
so uh, what we uh, don't have time to discuss. Uh, decision trees and random forests. and some unsupervised method. Uh, like clusterization. And uh, principal component analysis. Uh, and some correspondence analysis. And probably some other. And actually, uh, if you want, uh, if you want to discuss some of these methods, uh, just let me know. Probably we can arrange additional, uh, additional classes. So I can tell you something about, uh, about these methods, uh, because uh, officially we already spent all uh, all the hours, uh, all uh, all the classes that uh, were expected. But if you want uh, as some. Uh, some additional uh, additional classes. Uh, just let me know, and we will, uh, and uh, I will arrange them. And that's all for today. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I'm sorry I didn't upload it uh, all the lessons uh, videos of all the lessons yet, but I hope to do it today. Okay, then uh, that's all for today. Uh, just one question, uh, which is not related to the, like it's related to the presentation. Uh, do, do we already know when is the date of the presentation? Sorry? Uh, when is the, the, the presentation date for, uh, for the uh, project? Uh, for final projects, right? Yes, exactly. I don't know. Uh, it is it is the exam date. Uh, I, I I think it will be somewhere uh, at uh, somewhere uh, uh, somewhere at the end of June. I think uh, from twenties of June. I think uh, I think some, something like that. Uh, because the study office have to. Uh, decide uh, the date of the exam, and uh, at this date, uh, you will have this uh, this defense of your final projects. Okay, thank you. So, uh, and uh, will you arrange the course uh, as the one we did the previous week? Uh, sorry. Uh, will you arrange other calls? I mean, for the project. Uh, as you did uh, the last week. Uh. Ah, I see. Uh, if you if if uh, you have a questions about the final projects, uh, yes, just I will I will arrange additional consultations. Uh, as uh, uh, we will discuss uh, we'll discuss all the questions that you have. I think on the next week uh, I can I can do it. Probably not at the beginning of the week, but uh, I will let you know uh, when I will have some slots available. Many thanks. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, okay, we have 10 minutes break and then we continue with practical lesson. Yeah, we'll continue at uh, 1434. I will write it down.
So, hi everyone. It's nice to see you again on the, on our last official seminar. So, as I told you uh, before, uh, in most cases, for most methods uh, that you use in statistics, actually there is either some special case of linear uh, general linear model uh, that we studied before, like um, ANOVA, t-test, correlation, and so on. They all can be considered as some, as some sort of uh, linear uh, gen uh, general linear model. Well, sometimes it's a bit uh more complicated than that but usually it's just a, a very special case of general linear model but sometimes uh, <laughs> uh, uh, sometimes we work with uh, um, extensions uh, over uh, linear mix of uh, or linear uh, general linear model and there are many extensions the often can be combined uh, one upon another. Uh, and we'll cover two of them today. So first of all was uh, linear mix FX model, uh, all mere, uh, and uh, another one is a logistic regression that is considered to be a special case of generalized linear model. So both a generalized linear model and a linear mixed FX models is some kind of like linear uh, regression, but with something with some more with some complication of that. So we add to a general linear model some thing, and now it's a bit more complicated. It's now it's a bit more general. Uh, so let's start, I think, with a linear mixed FX model. Uh, that we covered today in the lecture. Uh, so uh, there are two main packages for doing uh, uh, linear mix effects models uh, in R. So it's not built in, but uh, these packages are very popular. They are very common. Uh, the first one is NLME. Uh, and the most and then the more, uh, the more uh, up-to-date uh, package is LME4. So let's start with installing this package. Oh, sorry, I need to turn on screen demonstration. So packages LME4. And of course, you, you need not only to install the package, but also import it. You need to install package only once and import it uh, every time you work with it. Don't remember that. Yep. So if you see something like that, uh, Steam that uh, everything is okay. Uh, Uh, so we'll use a data set that is in this uh, package. It's called sleep study. Study. I think you can get even even help for this data set. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's from a uh, real study, and the study was about uh, how your uh, performance, I mean, for simple tasks like uh, reaction time, uh, how it uh, became become worse uh, with your sleep deprivation. So, It was uh, studied uh, whether uh, your 
performance degradation, so your worsening of reaction time uh, becomes really worse uh, after one, two, three, four, six, and seven days of sleep deprivation. Let's, uh, let's have a look on what we have here, uh, sleep study. Sleep study. So yeah, you have, oh, you have nine days of sleep deprivation. Whoa. Uh, that, uh, from the studies, but uh, for the most sleep give, give, uh, deprived group, yeah, so the uh, the participants were not fully sleep deprived, but they had like three hours uh, for sleep. Uh, so like something similar to students during uh, deadlines, uh, you know. But now you can explore how it really uh, worsen your uh, performance if you do not sleep well. Uh, so you can see from the data that for particular subject, for particular subject, uh, it actually really decreases. I mean, uh, reaction time uh, uh, increases. So it starts with two, 250 or something like that. And then after some days, it goes to up to almost 500 seconds. So, you know, it's really uh, uh, high reaction time. So it's like uh, you have some stimulus and then, uh, yes, 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 yes. Uh, I press the button. And of course, you can see that uh, different subjects, they start with different baseline. So for example, someone is faster in general. Uh, someone is slower in the beginning of the uh, study. So we have not only uh, this uh, tendency to improve, uh, to, to uh, for uh, reaction time increase, but also we have some inter-individual uh, uh, inter uh, differences that can be accounted uh, for the model. So, let's now visualize the data using a uh, jplot. Plot base y no reaction. And uh, we'll use uh, John line plus a drone point. Yeah, I forgot about ideas. Oh no. I need to separate the different lines. Uh, so to separate it, I can use, for example, group equal to um, subject. Yeah, so now you can see like different individual lines. Uh, let's also add uh, change uh, X scale. Uh, X continues plus no. And actually, I think it will be easier to understand the different lines if we actually separate them on different uh, layouts, so on different graphs. And you can do this with uh, facet wrap. Wrap subject. And now you don't need to 
for this. So what you have here, you have individual uh, dynamics for reaction time uh, during this sleep deprivation study from zero uh, from day zero, so the start of the experiment to day nine. So you can see that in general, it increases, right? It, at least it seems so, and we need to check whether uh, it could be like random noise, whether this uh, change is significant. Um, but of course, they start with different baselines, and maybe even they even have different uh, speed of this uh, uh, reaction time change uh, during the experiment. Uh, so uh, in this case, uh, we'll try to uh, create a model for uh, using the linear mix effects model. Uh, so let's start. So in this case, uh, it, uh, actually the syntax is very similar to LM function, but instead of LM, you have function LMER, L-M-E-R. Uh, and of course, the first uh, argument, the same as for LM function is a formula. And let's, uh, and let's write this formula. So to the left side, uh, you write uh, for a subject, what are you for a subject? Uh, what do you mean what's written before subject? Ah, yeah, yeah, I understand what's your question. Uh, it's Kida. Uh, you can usually find it on the left uh, top uh, part of your keyboard. Uh, usually it's uh, to the left to uh, uh, symbol one and it's under escape symbol. Uh, for example, uh, for Russian keyboards, usually here you can find also a uh, uh, letter Yo. That is quite rare and it's, it's not usually used anymore. Uh, yeah, actually the symbol is the same that is used for formula. And because actually this is a formula class of data, uh, but in here it's used not for, for uh, uh, statistical modeling, but just to specify um, uh, the structure of uh, this facetting. So if I just press it kill the subject, I just say, okay, just divide it by subjects and divide by yourself. Can you paste it in chat? Uh, I mean, I think it is exactly the same symbol that you use for LM function, so this one. So if you if you run uh, LM uh, functions before, uh, you obviously know how to uh, do the symbol. And of course, try to find the symbol on your keyboard. Uh, okay, so let's return to the uh, to the uh, Olmer syntax. So yeah, the first part is pretty similar to a linear model uh, LM function. So to the left, you you have uh, what uh, you want to predict. So reaction time, uh, and to the right you uh, uh, to the right part you uh, write your predictors. Uh, so for fixed effects, uh, uh, it is actually the same. So like uh, you can consider a uh, uh, linear model, general linear model, for example, multiple linear regression as a linear mix effects model with only fixed effects. So in the case uh, that uh, you don't have any uh, random effects, uh, you have just like linear model. 
But in contrast to, in addition to a linear model, you have also this random effects that you're not usually interested in. And uh, I mean, you are interested uh, how they influence uh, the outcome. You want to account for this uh, uh, variation, but it is not of your particular uh, interest usually because for uh, fixed effects, uh, you just assume that, yeah, there is some uh, there is some predictor that has some number of values, some fixed number of values, and uh, they somehow uh, influence uh, your outcome. For example, you have free diets, so you're interested only in these free diets. But for random effects, you just assume that okay, there are some uh, there is some predictor, uh, and actually this predictor uh, is somewhat like a, a random variable by itself. So, uh, for example, uh, individual uh, reaction times. Uh, so assume that yeah, of course, uh, different subjects they have different uh, reaction time in general. Uh, but uh, you think about them like, yeah, every subject is actually something like uh, 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 each subject's uh, uh, um, average reaction time is just a uh, random uh, variable from normal distribution, for example. And you're not like interested in particular subjects. You are not interested to test whether one subject is better than another. Because if you're interested in that, you should use, in this case, uh, fixed uh, effects. Uh, but you just assume that, yes, yeah, there is some variability between subjects. And uh, this uh, variability is random. So in this case, you need to specify random factors. Uh, and the most simple way is uh, this one. So you write uh, in uh, circle brackets, one, then vertical line, and then your uh, random factor, something that you want to use as a random factor. So in this case, it's subject. Uh, this seems to be a bit complicated, but it's important because uh, this way you can specify actually much more complicated models and we can even check whether, uh, we can even check these models uh, and we can have a look uh, how it can be, uh, how, can, uh, how you can uh, improve a model, how you can, enrich the model, how you can like make the model more complicated and maybe uh, more similar to what you have in your reality. Uh, and then the, uh, after you specify the model, you need to specify the uh, data argument. So actually all the, most of the, okay, most of the things that we uh, used for uh, LM functions uh, will work with uh, a linear function. For example, we can use predict uh, for prediction of new uh, data. Let's even do it. So let's create this model. Predict, we can use summary. Yeah, uh, in these cases, uh, you can see uh, uh, you can see that uh, you can see results that are pretty similar to what you have when uh, you use uh, LM function. 
but with some differences. First of all, uh, you, you can find uh, some interesting things that uh, you can see uh, estimate a standard error and t value, uh, but because of uh, some difficulties in uh, estimating uh, uh, degrees of freedom for these models, uh, p value is not calculated. Uh, actually, this difference are not really usually. Uh, usually are not really that important because you know that t distribution, well, it's basically for, uh, for the sample that is big enough, it's very, very close to normal distribution. So all this uh, discussions on whether, on how you need to uh, calculate p-value, they, they are not that really uh, important. You can just use at least uh, just one option. You can just use some more conservative option. And actually result on p-value will be actually pretty similar. Uh, so there are different ways to estimate p-values in here, uh, but uh, none of them are presented in the uh, LMU4 uh, package. And basically just because as the author of this package, he, he, he really just doesn't like p-values. I mean, it's really, if you Google why there are no p-values, you can, uh, for LMV4 package, you can find the article that is very passive aggressive in, uh, in its style, but uh, by uh, the after this package, explaining why he, he doesn't like p-values and how he is tired of people uh, who ask him to edit. Uh, but actually, uh, actually, you can uh, just use external package. Uh, I need to check <laughs> this package. Uh, P values for LME of four. Da -da -da. And you can get, yeah, uh, you can find the package LME test. Let's install it. Install packages, package on your test. So this package does not really, uh, I mean, it does not like specific package with a um, uh, specific syntax. Uh, no, it's just a, a package that something like an add-on to uh, LME4. So consider this package is something like uh, DLC for, for some computer game. It just adds some, a bit of uh, additional content, but doesn't change uh, anything in general. Uh, LME test. Yeah, and now if you run the same model, uh, you'll get the p-values, at least the, the estimation. So you can, uh, you can see that, yeah, both intercept, intercept, uh, as I remember, we are not interested in because, yeah, reaction time in general is not equal to zero. Okay, it's pretty obvious, um, but we are interested in this day's factor. Uh, and also, uh, you can compare models. And basically, uh, that's how you actually uh, do uh, uh, you, uh, do st uh, statistical analysis with uh, linear mixed FX models. You compare different models, whether uh, like the most basic model with no effect uh, is uh, whether your more complicated model is better than more simple model. And if it does, you can choose the more complicated model. Uh, for example, uh, we can create a bit more complicated model. Uh, let's actually, uh, let's first visual, uh, visualize the data. So what actually uh, this model mean that we created uh, and to, find it out, we can do function predict. Uh, 
And actually what it will give us, it will give us something like uh, uh, estimation for individual regression lines. So let's uh, visualize it. Okay. Flip. Let's do some reprocessing first. Uh, so first I want to rename uh, the variable reaction to variable observed reaction time. Actually, it doesn't matter that much, but okay. So let's do it later maybe. Uh, what I really need to do, uh, to, to make this plot easier, I want to, uh, I want to, actually, I don't need to do it pivot longer here. Yeah, I can just, yeah, I don't need to do something specific here. Plot, uh, so this more or less, it's more or less the same as, as we have here. This reaction. Uh, plus drawing line. Drawing uh, line. Uh, I guess. Uh, yeah, here we need to change reaction to predicted by sleep on you all. And let's use color with the uh, orange. Let's do something like that. Uh, next thing that we need to do, John point. Mm. Yeah, and also we want to uh, have like original line that we used here, right? Drum point. Uh, yeah, and also I think this one you can just copy, paste. So actually we have everything, uh, everything is very similar to this one. We just add a line uh, with our predicted result. That will be like an additional orange line on the screen. So you can see, right? So this uh, predicted by the model results. So actually the regression line fitted by the model uh, is here. It is orange line. Uh, so you can see that uh, actually instead of simple linear model where you uh, fitted uh, just one line. Here you have many lines and uh, every line uh, uh, represents like a prediction for one subject. So you can see that uh, this uh, slope for this line is the same for all participants. It is restricted by the model, uh, but its intercept is different and it depends on particular subject. Right? I hope it's it's clear. So we have uh, in linear mix FX model, uh, we have not one regression line, but like individual regression line for every subject. So we assume that uh, this uh, slope coefficient is different for every subject. Oh, this uh, intercept, sorry, uh, coefficient is different for every subject. And it follows uh, some normal distribution that uh, is fitted uh, when we fit the model. Uh, 
in addition, we can do a bit more complicated model. Let's do it. Uh, we can add uh, uh, to the model one more level of complexity. We can think about that not just uh, like every uh, subject start with different baseline that is actually said by the model. So uh, uh, it says that for every subject uh, performance worsen uh, is worsening uh, uh, with each day with some uh, speed. Uh, but the initial point, so like uh, uh, reaction time for zero uh, for day zero is different, but this but but the speed of this worsening is the same for every subject. But we can uh, fit the more complicated model. Uh, we can uh, fit the model where uh, 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 where this uh, change uh, in reaction time will be different for different subjects. Uh, in this case, we need to specify inside uh, inside our circle brackets uh, variable days. So it means that there is a interaction between days and subject. Uh, and now we'll use like we'll create another model. And let's see summary for this model. Uh, you can see that for fixed effects, we don't have any more predictors there. So actually, uh, uh, you don't, you do not uh, add more fixed variables there. You just add uh, this uh, interaction between uh, uh, fixed effect days and uh, random effect subject. Uh, so that's why you don't have any other additional uh, predictors of your interest here. Uh, and let's see how it looks like if you, uh, if you, sorry, yes, this one. Yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah, but yeah, uh, you don't have any additional fixed effects here. Uh, okay, and uh, now let's see what we'll have if we uh, uh, plot these new lines that we fitted with this more complicated model. Just change here for maybe one and one, right? And also let's just add another uh another line here but it will be not orange but let's say purple and let's have a look so do you see the difference so now you have purple lines uh, for a more complicated model uh and this purple line in contrast to orange lines so orange lines, they're just, uh, uh, they just uh, differs in their intercepts, but the slope is uh, the same everywhere. Uh, for purple lines, uh, the slope is different for uh, both slope and intercept is different for every subject. And it seems reasonable, right? Because maybe, uh, yeah, it's, it seems pre uh, very reasonable that uh, different uh, people have different uh, reaction time in general. But also it's reasonable that maybe this worsening of reaction time during, uh, 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 during uh, the experiment is different for different persons. So uh, maybe 
someone is more uh, has more resources, for example, and he uh, he uh, for example more stable uh, emotionally, mentally, and uh, therefore, for example, this guy uh, has or she has very low reaction time and. Yeah, of course, you can see that in general, uh, uh, during the experiment, his uh, performance is worsening, but it is really, really uh, slow in contrast, for example, to uh, this subject. It's pretty, it's very close to linear, right? Uh, and also, this guy is also faster in this, uh, 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 worse interaction times than others. So, for example, oh, for example, this uh, this guy who starts with a pretty low reaction time, but uh, when he or she starts uh, starts to uh, sleep less, his perf uh, his or her performance uh, drops uh, down very fast. So in this case, you can ask me like, okay, but which uh, model is better? Uh, and of course, it's pretty complicated question because with a linear mixed effects model, uh, you have actually uh, many degrees of freedom in what you can actually model. You can create rather complicated models in terms of, uh, uh, interaction between predictors. Uh, and it's really a tough question and it's really not sim uh, simple to answer. Uh, which line to choose for your experiment? Um, because it's easier when you have only one predictor, but if you have several of them, you have like, you have really you need to do many choices uh, with which uh, model to which model to choose, and in general, it should be based on your theory. Uh, and there are different like recommendations. Uh, for example, to make actually the more complicated model uh, that accompany to different like correlation interactions between uh, predictors. Uh, when you use linear mixed effects models. And also you can compare these models. Uh, there are different ways to do that. Uh, the first one is using just a function ANOVA that actually used, is used for analysis of variance. Uh, actually, I didn't tell you that you can do uh, ANOVA in different ways, even in base R. Uh, uh, the one that we used is function uh, AOV, if you remember that. Uh, another one is a function ANOVA. They usually uh, used in different uh, cases. For example, uh, ANOVA function is usually used to compare different models, not only for uh, analysis of variance uh, model, but also for like more complicated models. And in this case, you can uh, check whether uh, using a chi square test, whether one model is significantly better than another one uh, using this p-value for chi square test. Uh, and another option is using uh, AIC or a big criteria. Uh, that is a, basically you can find the uh, ache, uh, well, it's just ache, uh, no, ache uh, formula. Let's see. Yeah, uh, it's based on likelihood. And basically, the lower your uh, uh, ache, the better. And also this AIC uh, number based, is, uh, based uh, on two, uh, on two uh, values. Uh, 
or number of parameters in your model. So actually, the less parameters you have in your model, the better. It's basically the same logic that is used for adjusted R squared. So when you have more predictors, when you have more parameters, uh, uh, you have a risk of overfitting your, uh, to your data. So to catch not some meaningful connections in your data, but catch some noise. Uh, and another value is the likelihood. I do not cover in details how it's calculated, but it's uh, like the, the higher likelihood, the better your uh, uh, the better your uh, model fits to data. Uh, so actually, uh, the lower this AIC number, the better your model. So you can just compare AIC of two models and say, okay. This one is lower, so I will take this model. Another, another uh, criterion is a uh, big, but basic, but basically, I can be are very similar. I mean, the so similar that you can even just uh, not notice the difference. So actually, in the, for the formula for big, you have not. Uh, you punish yourself not by number of predictors, but by logarithm of this, of this number. So, I mean, the idea is uh, the same. To T and this you have uh, T, ah, no, not by um, logarithm of these numbers, but uh, natural logarithm of uh, data points. Uh, instead of two. So basically uh, two formulas are very uh, similar, results are very similar. So you can uh, uh, like uh, uh, choose either I or big, and usually they give you the same results. So in this case, you can see that, yeah, uh, p-value for his square test here uh, says that this model is significantly uh, better than this one, than the more general one. Uh, and also you can see that IE can be a lower for the more complicated model, even accounting for this punishment for more predictors. Uh, so you can choose the more complicated model. Uh, so yeah. And another thing, it, that's all that I wanted to show you with the uh, uh, linear mixed FX models. Actually, it's pretty complicated topic because there are many uh, nuances and it's uh, hard to uh, explain everything during one seminar. So my goal was to give you some uh, like, uh, understanding how it's done in R, what you can do with it, uh, and uh, uh, some simple examples, how you can use it with a code. Uh, another thing that we want to uh, do, uh, that, uh, that I want to cover during the seminar is logistic regression. Uh, logistic regression, logistic regression, uh, do you remember what is logistic regression and in which cases we need this? Or maybe you have any questions on uh, linear mixed FX models. But let's uh, better go to logistic regression because we are limited on time. And I think we'll uh, do some logistic regression, uh, but we'll be a bit out of time. So, I mean, do you remember from the previous class? I mean, maybe Alexander. Or... So it is something that we uh, did uh, last class. Uh, yes, mm -hmm. uh, 
I don't know, I have a code with uh, R, R Draco Corpus uh, with German. Yeah, I, I remember that, that we analyzed mm -hmm. German drama corpus. Yeah, but uh, we, uh, during the previous uh, classes, we use it for, uh, ah, actually I sent you, uh, sent you uh, a script with a code for logistic regression, I think. But we didn't cover it uh, during previous seminar. Uh, or oh, we covered it. So what we actually, so, so what's the difference between logistic regression and just multiple linear regression? I think that logistic regression involves some logarithms and and multiple linear regression uh, does not involve yeah, it's a difference in terms of uh, how it's conducted from inside. Uh, but let me uh, start from another point. Why uh, uh, cannot you use, uh, in which cases, in which cases uh, linear regression will be not enough for something and you need to use logistic regression? Because we are basically, Again, we, we, we usually start from uh, everything, uh, almost everything in uh, uh, statistics is somehow um, centered around a uh, linear model. Of course, not everything, especially the methods that we didn't cover, uh, but we uh, should have like for clustering, um, clustering what cells. Uh, decision trees and so on, they are not related to linear regression. Uh, but uh, for other cases, it's usually centered around, about, uh, around uh, linear regression. So for example, uh, um, uh, in, in which case you can see the data, you can see the tasks that you need and you think, okay, uh, how can I do it with linear regression? And you come to, uh, uh, to conclusions that actually there is no way to do it uh, using a linear regression. And that's why you need to do something more complicated. Okay, so let me uh, use this uh, data uh, from, uh, let's say Russian drama corpus, or Dracor. Get Dracor room. Uh oh. Okay, and uh, let me just simplify a bit. So let's uh, delete all genres that uh, are main first. Right, and then Let's just select some uh, uh, some uh, columns that are uh, that are interesting to us. Uh, normalized genre, right? Uh, let's size and word count text. So every row now is uh, some comedy or tragedy. In uh, Russian corpus, we have only comedies and tragedies. Uh, and a uh, number of characters and number of uh, spoken words for the play. Uh, and also let's create another variable, a binary variable, whether uh, it is a tragedy. So something like a dummy variable that we created previously. 
In this uh, uh, case, it will be actually important because for some reason, uh, when you do logistic progression in R, it doesn't want to do uh, this binary variable by itself. Uh, let, let's say as numeric. As numeric. Mm -hmm. So we did some preprocessing. Um, so what we want to do, we want to predict this uh, variable strategy. So is strategy. So what we, uh, we, we want to somehow uh, classify, uh, actually it's a particular case of classification in this case when we have uh, only two, uh, uh, classes, uh, we want to predict whether the play is comedy or tragedy. Uh, can we use uh, linear regression here? So just simple LM function. What do you think? I'm struggling with the code, so could you copy that, uh, the code in the chat uh, from the mm -hmm. nine? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I get some errors. So, let's try to uh, do simple linear regression on this data. Well, let's see what will happen and what will be wrong with it. Um, LM, let's say, let's do some simple uh, model, is strategy uh, by uh, size. Have only one predictor, size, and data equal to select row. Right, we did some linear regression, we will get some summary, right? We, we, we have some results and they seem to be pretty much okay. So we don't have any errors there, right? Uh, but if you don't have any errors, it doesn't mean that we did something correct. Because let's have a look on predicted values for this model, or not predicted, but predicted. Uh, well, in this case, actually, it seems pretty much okay, but uh, in many cases, you'll get some values that are outside of range from zero to one. So you can, think that is it, uh, that's something like a probabilities here, but it's not, it's wrong. It's, uh, these values are not probabilities. Uh, uh, and actually, if you fit uh, uh, LM linear uh, regression model to uh, the data where your outcome uh, is binary, you can get some strange results that like, uh, your predicted value, for example, can be more than one, or uh, if you, especially if you do some, uh, apply some new uh, data, or less than zero. And you know, it's strange that they cannot be uh, less than zero or more than one. Uh, the problem is that, yeah, there, is some, there are some assumptions about uh, uh, error distributions for uh, linear model, and they're very, uh, 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 really uh, strongly violated if your outcome is binary. That's why you cannot, uh, uh, you cannot uh, do a linear model. Uh, I will even write it. 
we not do that. You cannot uh, apply a linear model uh, if your outcome is binary. In this case, you need to do some more complicated. You need to apply some model where uh, uh, your uh, outcome can be binary. And that's actually a logistic progression. But to run the logistic progression, you, you, can, you need to use not LM function, but GLM function. GLM stands for generalized linear model. So again, we talk about generalization of linear model. Um, that is actually can use, uh, uh, so linear model is a special case of general linear model is a special case of generalized linear model, uh, uh, especially uh, in general linear model, uh, your, uh, uh, out uh, your uh, errors in your model are considered to be linear, uh, but also generalized linear model has also other uh, potential uh, regression, for example, logistic regression, Poisson regression, and so on. Depend on your uh, actually depend on uh, uh, depend on your outcome variable. Uh, so for a binary variable, a uh, special case for generalized linear model is logistic regression. Uh, and again, uh, the syntax for GLM function is very similar to LM function. Again, to the left, you uh, have uh, your, uh, uh, to the left, you have your outcome. To the right, you have your predictor or predictors. If you have several of them, that's okay. So it will be more or less the same. We can even write it down here. You can use size plus word count text data selected rule. And that's important for GLM. We need to specify one more important parameter. We need to specify a parameter family that has a link function uh, for, that is different for different uh, special cases of generalized in your model. Uh, so if you want to use uh, if you want to use logistic regression, you can just write binomial. And it will do you uh, logistic regression. Let's do it in GLM fit. Uh, oh, maybe we need to plot it. Uh, and now let's. Uh, Let's now uh, select one more data set uh, from uh, our original uh, rule data set. We'll select the same uh, columns except for uh, normalized gender. We'll try to predict whether uh, the play is, uh, is uh, tragedy or comedy. Uh, based on these two variables. Uh, for the variables that we don't know, uh, for the uh, place that we don't know whether they are uh, comedies or tragedies. So we want to uh, uh, fill these missing values, uh, in this case, using uh, uh, our logistic regression. So in this case, we start with the filter, but we don't want to drop an A. We want to do something otherwise. We want to uh, we want to something uh, we want to do something opposite. So we want to just uh, take only place that has an A for normalized gender. So that's why we use is normal uh, normalized gender. So we'll take only place that has 
an uh, only place that have a name for normalized general uh, column. And next we need to select uh, uh, the columns that we used for predictor, uh, for uh, as predictors for JLA function. That means size and word count text. And yeah, we have only two columns. And based on these two columns, you want to predict the third column. Uh, pom, pom, pom. Let's call it rule gender NA. Uh, and in this case, you use function predict. Predict data. And what you uh, you should specify also is the type. Uh, let's say response. It will return us probabilities uh, of the estimated probabilities uh, for the specific play to be a tragedy. And now we get some values that are basically now probability values. And next, uh, we can, for example, use some cutoff. For example, uh, if uh, uh, this probability is higher than 0 0.5, we can say that uh, it is a tragedy. Otherwise, it will be a comedy. Uh, yeah, we can even like, uh, use something like uh, rule. Uh, gender uh, NA estimated gender uh, prop like this gender NA and then you can use something like gender NA state uh, if else uh, estimated general prop is more than 0 0.5, it will be a tragedy. Otherwise, it will be a comedy. Uh, and voila, we have some like predicted based on our uh, model predicted uh gender so of course it's not like uh, the way it's usually done because uh, basically when you do some prediction based on some data it's actually some uh, machine learning uh, and of course, in these cases, uh, if you do it in uh, uh, in uh, with the purpose of predictions of, of some value, you should use some more complicated ways, uh, uh, some more complicated things. You need to use some cross validation, so you need to. Uh, divide your uh, uh, variable to train and test variable and uh, test your uh, uh, model uh, on the different data set that you uh, uh, use for uh, training the model. And so you can use some regularization techniques uh so basically uh, in these cases it can be somewhat overfitted and there are also ways to avoid this overfitting uh when you use uh regression uh for prediction uh but if you're interested just in like a model in coefficients whether it's uh like uh, whether some predictor is significant or not, uh, that can be just submitted 
especially if you have like a small uh, sample. In this case, it's pretty small. Um, so yeah, I think that's all. Do you have any questions for what I did? Okay, I need to save this. Mm -hmm. Reverse. Uh, year four. Um, and I think that's all for today and for the main part of the course, right? I hope you enjoyed this part uh, because it's very fascinating when we step on the field of more complicated models. Um, but you can see that basically they are somewhat like a generalizations of linear model and uh, they're not um, uh, more, they're not much more difficult than just linear model. They have just some additional elements. And of course, uh, it will be reasonable to assume that if you have like uh, two different generalizations, you have also some generalization of these two generalizations. And that's right, because you have also generalized linear mix effects model. So uh, for example, you can do logistic regression, but also with some random effects, right? It's pretty used in cognitive science, for example, nowadays, where uh, you want to predict, um, for example, uh, accuracy for some task. And you don't want to just calculate average accuracy uh, for some condition and for some, sub some subject, but you want to uh, use some complicated model uh, with random effects for subject, uh, with a fixed effect for some conditions. And uh, because uh, your accuracy, I mean, whether your answer was correct or not is a binary variable, is a binary outcome. So it's zero or one. In this case, you cannot use just linear mixed effects models. You need to use uh, generalized uh, linear mixed effects models for uh, uh, logistic regression with some random ethics. So yes, I think that's pretty all. Maybe if you have any questions, I can answer you. Ilya mm, Valerievich uh, said that uh, uh, we did not discuss uh, some uh, other models like uh, mm -hmm. he named decision trees uh, and random forests, some yeah. uh, supervised methods, so uh, clusterization, uh, etc. So for uh, for these uh, models, there are also some tools in R which can be used, right? I, I mean, yes, of course. I mean, if you have something uh, in statistics, I mean, if you have something in statistics, if it's somewhere implemented. It's implemented in R. I mean, for uh, statistics, uh, R is a default language. So maybe it's not, uh, so maybe it's realized somewhere else, but by default uh, for some complicated uh, statistical model, it is realized in R too. Uh, it is not the same for uh, some machine learning. So for example, for deep learning, uh, there can be some cases where some very complicated novel model is implemented in some, I know, TRS tensor flow, like some uh, Python uh, library, but, it, but it's not realized in R, but it's usually not the case. And say there are some ports and so on. Uh, but for uh, models, uh, for statistical models, uh, for statistical tasks, uh, like R is a language of like a default language. So uh, sometimes if you see some you know, statistical, um, uh, some article uh, in statistics journal that describes some new method, that's usually accompanied by uh, the package for R. Uh, 
for example. So of course, for PCA, for clustering, for um, what's called decision trees uh, uh, and random forest, you have uh, packages and R and moreover for uh, like most of what uh, we discussed actually can be done in, in the base R. So for example, uh, for principal component analysis in base R, you have even two implementations, right? So it's not, you don't need to use external library. You have very really nice uh, implementation in the base library. Well, a bit outdated, but okay. It's, uh, 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 there are no better implementations for now. Uh, I mean, I don't like the syntax, how it works and so on, but, but it, it works. It's, uh, it, uh, and actually there are two implementations for PCA uh, in base R. And the same for clustering, uh, for k-means, hierarchical clustering, you have uh, default functions uh, in base R and uh, of course in the package stats, but it's included in base R. Uh, and you can even find some nice function for visualizations of this result and some additional things. So, yep. And of course, you just can uh, find some uh, tutorials how to do something in R. And uh, the goal of this course, as well as all other courses on uh, statistics and R is not to give you like the whole bunch of instruments that you can just write down and look at your writings and okay, now I will use this because I have this uh, because it was taught like that uh, during seminars, especially now because uh, you have so many tutorials on the internet. Uh, the goal is more to provide you some roadmap of what uh, you can apply. In most cases, you uh, like you will apply something that we actually covered uh, during the course. But if you need something more complicated, just know that, okay, I need to use some generalized uh, 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 linear mixed effects models. Okay, we didn't cover it during the class, but I can just easily, I can just uh, Google it and find the function and I know that it will be pretty similar uh, to what I did before, but maybe there are some nuances that I need to uh, read on more carefully. Uh, so, yep. Uh, you'll easily find your, uh, some more advanced tutorial uh, tutorials in the internet in your language, of course, also because you can find both in Russian, in Italian, in English, uh, many tutorials. At least I know for Russian and English, but I think for other languages, uh, you can find uh, tutorials too. Uh, and handbooks. Yeah, don't forget about handbooks, but actually I prefer the study by tutorials, by short tutorial for the specific test, but of course, sometimes you need to read books. Uh, yes, yes, uh, ah, for previous seminar, okay, yes, uh, but I think I sent it, but I will send it, send both scripts. Okay, I think that's all for today. Thank you for your attention and good luck with uh, data analysis and statistics. And yeah, when you do, uh, the very important thing is that uh, when you do your uh, own analysis, uh, you'll find out uh, find out that things are much more complicated than it was that it seemed uh, during the seminars. Because of course, when I write something, I do some mistakes uh, and so on. But in general, I have rather high speed of uh, doing analysis uh, because I have. Like, like a lot of experience, I practice almost every day. I do some, some analysis almost every day. And of course, it's somewhat like on tips of my fingers. And 
if you try to do it by yourself, in most cases, unless you are really genius, uh, you'll find out that, well, I don't know. I don't know how where to start. I don't know what to do. It's much more complicated than just uh, study cases. And that's completely okay. Mm, because in real life, it will never be like, uh, just put your data set in this function and you'll get your results. In, in real life, you need to think uh, on every step of you, uh, what you do. You need to think how you transform your data set that you have uh, as an input, or even how to collect it, uh, and then how to transform it to the format that is needed for the function. Uh, you need to think about it a lot and it will be hard. It will not be easy. That's why we uh, focused on data processing uh, so much that uh, I cover different uh, uh, patterns. I cover different tools uh, and I try to not uh, show you something that will be not used by you. So all the things that we covered I think you'll find out some some days that well they're pretty uh, pretty useful, uh, but if you feel struggle uh, struggled when you do your own analysis, it's very okay. That's something that everyone who has some experience uh, who had some experience that had some uh, success in learning programming that is uh, like everyone had these feelings. And uh, if you feel that, well, nothing, uh, I mean, uh, everything goes wrong, uh, nothing works, that's completely okay. It doesn't mean anything about you. Uh, it doesn't mean that you are stupid. It's just uh, something that people do not talk a lot about because when something is covered on the courses, something is covered during uh, the seminars, especially how it's advertised, like learn data science in three days. Uh, no, it doesn't work like that. It's, uh, uh, you'll have this uh, time of struggling, with solving some puzzles that can be uh, pretty local. You can do some very specific tasks for a long time, and that's very okay. That is the way you learn, and after some hours, days, weeks, months, it will be faster. But do not expect that you will write code just like line by line. Uh, you will learn to do that if you have patience, but for the first tries, it will be very slow and very hard, and that's uh, that's very okay. Uh, okay, that's all for today. Uh, so, bye everyone. I hope uh, I will see you again, and we'll uh, cover some additional uh, topics. It will be fun. Uh, so, good luck with your analysis. Good luck with improving your uh, data analysis skills uh, in the future. So, bye everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, have a good day. Thank you.